Hey y'all, welcome back to a unseasonably cold day here at the 1st of November in the western Piedmont, North Carolina. This is part of the farm that I don't know if I've ever put on video or not, um, somewhat intentionally. Uh, this is my chemical room. <clears throat> The wind is blowing. That's why I'm in here. We planted our, our main crop of strawberries a little earlier on and then we had quite a few plants left over. So I went back and laid more plastic this past week and we just planted some more strawberries. So um, I'm glad I waited but I need to get my Ritamil Gold run on strawberries. This is a very important step for growing strawberries. Um, this takes care of all of the soilborne diseases. So, Red Mill Gold, that's going to get our strawberries off to a really good healthy start. Alright, step one for uh, running some chemicals through our drip irrigation system is already complete. We've got the system full. The system has to be charged before you start. If it's not, you're going to put all your chemicals um, in the beginning of the row or the end of the row, depending on how your field's laid out and none of it evenly distributed across the field like what you want. So I put just a little bit of water in the bottom of the barrel so I'm not pouring chemicals straight into there. Then uh, we'll add our chemical and we'll add water and get it all mixed up really good. So <clears throat> I know exactly how many feet of plastic mulch I have and there are roughly 8,000 feet of plastic mulch in an acre, depending on your spacing. For my spacing, there's 8,000 feet in an acre. So I know exactly how many acres of strawberries I have, so I can figure out exactly how many ounces of chemical I need. So I have that number, and I need to multiply it by 16 ounces to the acre. With Ritamil Gold, you can... Uh, apply it three times a year one pint per application they recommend you apply it after planting right before harvest begins and during harvest depending on the disease pressure so i need 30 ounces of ritamil and we'll be golden for this field I don't run any kind of filter on the end of my uh, injector hose because uh, I've got a video about it, but it slows down uh, trying to inject potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate just doesn't inject very good or doesn't dissolve very good. So uh, a, having a screen on the end of your pickup tube for your injector kind of adds an extra layer of complications to injecting potassium nitrate so i take that off and uh, as a result of that you can stop up your injector so make sure you really try to keep your everything clean all right next step is we got to turn our valves on and Start dialing our pressure back until we start getting some chemical. There we go. I just heard it pick up. Now the only thing left to do is to make sure that we keep gas in the pump so that we keep this thing going. Because it's we want to inject this nice and slow before we really um, saturate the bed with an even concentration of this Ritamil so that we prevent red steel or phytophthora vascular collapse and leather rot are all the pathogens that it protects against for strawberries so good stuff now when you start cranking that valve down to divert the water up through that mozzie injector that's when you find out if you've got a suction leak on your pump because if your suction hose on your irrigation pump 
is sucking any air it will stop pumping when you start dialing that pressure back and putting a lot of head pressure in front of that pump just something to keep in mind so this is our <laughs> i guess what you would call the backwaters of our irrigation pond um, we got a dam and there's three creeks that run together down through here and they're backed up and it doesn't look like much but um that's about six foot deep out there in the middle there's some serious water volume backed up this old creek bed and uh for us we have uh three splits well yeah we have three different duck seasons we have an early october season then we have another season that comes in usually about two weeks before thanksgiving and then we have a late season well today was opening day of duck season and when i walked down here to crank this pump a few minutes ago i didn't have my camera with me three wood ducks got up off of this pond i guess they're just making fun of me because i'm working and don't have a shotgun All right, so here's a close look at how the Mozzie uh, chemical or fertilized injector is plumbed up on this set of filters. Typically, you would want your filters setting with your pump at the creek or the source of water. But we are like 700 feet from the creek and this decreases my pressure to the point that I don't have significant enough pressure to do what I need to do in the field if I put this at the creek. So I found that for me it works better if I'm sitting here with 80 pounds of pressure, 70, 80 pounds of pressure coming from the pump and then I dial it back and do what I need to do here at the field. But this is the injector setup. This is one of the smallest Mozzie injectors you can buy. I would actually like to have a bigger one because this one is awful slow. But here is my water source. It comes through. This is the very first step. That way you filter out any impurities before it makes it to your drip line. So the incoming water, this is just a gate valve where you can dial down the pressure and divert water through the Mozzie which creates a vacuum right here in this venturi and it will start siphoning chemical or fertilizer or whatever you're wanting and then this allows it to come back into the line on the lower pressure side so this whole system it looks more complicated than it looks more complex than it is all it does is divert water around the valve through the mozzie which picks up chemical or fertilizer and injects it into the main water which then goes through the filters and out to the field um, off the top here there is an extra valve so that you can get water to uh, dilute your chemical or uh, dissolve your fertilizer and if you are having problems if you start dialing your pressure back right here and your pump stops pumping without a doubt you have got an air leak on the suction hose of your pump pump just can't stand to have that much back pressure if it's not got good suction um, so other than keeping the pump full of gas and making sure my barrel don't get pumped dry that's uh, pretty much all there is to it now when this barrel pumps dry um, I'm going to be coming over here regularly checking on it when I come over here and it's got just a little bit to go. I'm probably going to dial her up to finish sucking that out. And then I'm going to turn the valves off, open the gate valve to where we're back to full line pressure to the field. Well, to where we're back up to like 18 pounds to the field. And then um, I'm going to run it for an hour or so to make sure I get all the rid of meal flushed out of the lines so that it's all out there doing what it's supposed to do not trapped inside of the plastic drip tape um, so that's pretty much all there is to injecting i appreciate you guys watching hopefully this helped if you got any questions anything i didn't do a good job explaining anything you'd like for me to touch on in future videos 
please drop it in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you would. It would help the channel out. Um, leave comments. That helps the algorithm too. I appreciate the guys that watch my videos regularly. And uh, if you'll notice, I just got to a 1,000 subscribers. That's been a goal for a long time. I made it. Thanks to you guys. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.